Hey, what's up everyone, Danny and Alex. In this video, let's look at some side control as well as Keza positions for your Jiu Jitsu. So check it out. All right, once I've passed the guard, now I have to deal with controlling my opponent in the side control. Now it doesn't really matter how many techniques you know, if you can't maintain a position or control the opponent, none of the submissions are gonna work, right? So today we're gonna look at different positions for side control. Sometimes when it's only side control as it, the name implies, that really means being on your knees nice and tight, so your bottom knee is gonna be tight against the waistline and the other one's gonna be at the shoulder height, and then I want chest to chest and my palms to palms. Other times, this is the side control here. Other times, I might also say 100 kilo. So basically, it's just driving a little bit more pressure. So as I'm holding here, I might start to spread my legs out as such, right? To drive a little bit more weight. Sometimes two legs are gonna come out, but I don't prefer this method. Some people like to hold like this. I find this useless in the sense that I have no mobility. So if I spread one leg out, sprawl one out, the other one, the bottom side knee, will be tight against his waist, all right? Now the arm positioning can also change. Sometimes I'll just maintain control here on his gi, make a nice grip, and from the opposite side, I'll just monitor his hip. So this palm here will come at his waistline. And now I can start to Elevate my knees, sprawl one out, or sometimes I might also bring my hand in this direction as such. All right, so the over-under will consist of grabbing his neck and holding underneath this armpit and placing my palms together like this. All right, sometimes I'll use the over-under in this manner and have my hand monitoring this side of his leg so he can't recover the guard. So basically, if he can't bring this leg back inside and he's having trouble bringing his hips towards me and also moving his upper body in this direction, that's gonna make it more challenging for him to recover that guard position. That's what my intention is, to keep him exactly where he is so that way there, once I maintain his position, using this now, I can start to transfer either transitions or submissions. Now, the first attack usually that's available to us is the Americana. Right, so once we have this side control position, a lot of times, look, his hand might be in front of your face like this, all right? So maybe it's starting to get in position to frame, maybe it's just hanging there, all right? So the moment you see his wrist, we should take it, right? So if I was holding a side control here, this is a great position because he's hidden from what I'm trying to do. He doesn't see any of my intentions. But look, as I'm in this position here, controlling the hip, if I see this hand coming towards me, what I'm going to do is grab it here, boom. And now look, grab my own wrist. And from here, I have the submission. We know this already. These are basic things, right? So from here, I'm controlling the top side control here. I see the hand in front. I might trap his wrist, grab it from underneath here, boom. And now this hand will just slide right through and I'll just turn my own wrist and I can crank the shoulder right here. That's the Americana lock. Another great position from the side control is just transitioning into the Keza, right? So watch this. A lot of times he might try to recover the guard. So as he starts to frame here at the hip, and now he's trying to push and bring that leg towards my hip, what I'm going to do once I sense this is just transfer my weight to that bottom side. So look, transfer here. I'll block his waistline using my hips, cup his tricep, shoot my leg out, and make sure I can maintain this position. That's the Keza position. So take a look from a different angle. Once we turn here. So for example, here from the rear view, notice how my right knee is connected to his hip. The moment I sense that he's trying to recover that guard, watch how I shift my hips and now I block his bottom leg, right? My leg is in the way and now as I shoot out, I have a seat and now it makes it impossible for him to regain that guard position. Once I've transferred to the top position here, now I can also move myself to the top, all right? So for example, I might shift this leg, make a big step over, and now once I'm here, I can control the north-south. Now it's important in the north-south position to understand one thing. I don't want him to bring his knees in front of me like this. And now he's gonna invert, recover the guard. I don't want him to bring his elbows inside to drive pressure on the upper body to create space so he can do all of these recovery positions. What I wanna do is keep the elbows down nice and tight against his armpits. And look, I'll use my fingers and grab the belt here. Now I'll keep my chest low, head low, almost like I wanna listen. So I'm keeping my ears nice and tight, like this on his abdomen. And look, controlling the upper body here, so that way there, I don't give him any space for him to recover that position. Now I'll show you another attack we can do. Once we're in side control, we switch to the Keza. 
Look how he's controlling my armpit right here. Hand is cupped around the tricep, palm is against the elbow. Now this makes it really easy if he leans back just a little bit and shifts this leg back. Now it gives him the opportunity to pass the other leg over the head and now lock this in place and bridge forward. Let's take a look one more time. Look, he's going to cup this arm nice and tight. He's going to lean back just to give him that space so that way there he can clear the space here to bring his right leg over. All right. So from here, he passes through and look, as he bridges, causes the tap for the submission. Again, from side control now, what Alex is going to do is bring this arm over like we did. One, bring this down and cup this. Now he's going to switch his legs towards the bottom side. And now get them up. So once more, switches over from here. Watch how he shifts his hips and also controls this arm to prevent me from pushing his chest. So as he controls the arm now, my arm is behind him. And now he'll hop over, hook, and gain the mount. You can also use this to cup and hold here. Now a lot of times, this, there's a lot of space here. So as Alex showed the previous move, it's easy to pass your leg. Of course, if his legs were flat, now there's a lot of space to bring your leg over. But oftentimes, he might have his legs up like this. So this leg is on the lap, and now you don't have as much space. What happens now, every time I try to shift my leg over, he's going to extend this leg, putting it in the way, create that barrier for me to get that mount position. So when I see this, one option you can do is grab the pants. I'll grab right here on the outside of his knee, right here, make a nice grip, and look, I'll drive using the lever of my arm, his legs together as such. Boom, all the way here. Now watch this, I'll use my leg and step over my own arm. Once my knee goes through, my hand comes off. Now I have the mount position. I'll take care of this arm, bring it up out of the equation, and gain my mount. So once more, we gain this position here into the reverse Keza. Now the foot is up. What we're going to do is grab on the outside of his knee, smash the legs together. So you bring both feet together. So look, I kill two legs with one grip. All right. Now I'll stabilize here. This will give me the space necessary to drive my leg over. As I step through, watch when I release the grip. Only once my leg goes around, now I can release the grip. Now this arm will take care of this arm. And now look, hook the head and you'll have your mount. So there you have it guys, some basic tips and techniques for your side control game in Jiu Jitsu. Hope you enjoyed this content. Leave us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video. Take care.